Hey, it's James, Father's Rights and Resources, hashtag how I got cussy. I just had a couple of videos I just did where I'm being kind of harsh. So if I have back-to-back -back videos like that, I know a bunch of people are going to get their panties in a bunch. So I need to do something that teaches you a little something. You can walk away with something tangible and not just be left with, oh man, I've been a simp and a coward and just left devastated and nothing else. So I want to talk about discovery. Now, I have... A long video, if you're watching this on Instagram, I have a long video on my YouTube channel talking about depositions. You should watch that if you have an attorney and they've never told you about depositions or they've never offered to do a deposition in your case, your attorney's a complete buffoon and idiot. It's the number one tool or weapon available to you. So basically the principle of discovery, some of you have heard it, some of you haven't. It's depicted in the movies a lot, but it's so subtle, nobody really realizes what's going on. Next time you watch a legal movie, watch them talking about doing discovery, doing a deposition or interrogatories or request for production or whatever. Basically, in any type of court case, each side has a right to discover anything on the other side. That includes discovering in a criminal case, let's say you're accused of murder or assault or rob robbery, and they got surveillance video, fingerprints, a drop of blood, a hair, and some gloves or something. You have a right to discover all the evidence they're going to use against you. It's not like law and order where they whip out a piece of evidence. Oh, look at exhibit A. Ha ha. What about this? And they catch somebody off guard. Everybody has a chance to discover something ahead of time because you have a right to prepare for your defense. And so what they're going to use against you, that would be unfair by the element of surprise they win and they have, you know, like fingerprints that were faked or a signature that was forged or a blood sample that was swapped out or whatever. So in family court or in a civil court case, you could do, you could discover anything there. If I'm working for Dow Corporation, which first did implants back in the 60s or 50s, maybe the 70s, Dow Chemical created, you know, breast implants for women and they leaked and all these women got sick. I remember reading a book about it. I can't remember the book I read, but one lady got implants and she was going to her doctor. This is how stupid the medical industry is. The doctor knew she had implants and she's getting sick and her immune system is shutting down. She's having all these problems. And he goes through tests with her and examinations with her. And he doesn't even think, oh, I wonder if the foreign object in your body is bringing something into your body that's harming your body. Your body's dealing with it or rejecting it. Stupid, dumbass doctors. So, if she sues Dow Chemical, she can do discovery on the offensive side where she finds out all the ingredients that are in and, and all the processing, creating implants and stuff like that. <coughs> and she could discover everything on their side. Uh, the Aaron Brockovich movie with um, Julia Roberts, she played a real life woman who was a legal secretary or paralegal for a law firm, and they're suing a plant or a corporation that's dumping poison in the water. All these residents in the, in, um, I can't remember, was this Bakersfield or Barstow or some city in the San Bernardino County area in California, they were all getting poisoned, everybody's getting cancer, and they realized they were dumping chemicals in the water and it was getting in the water supply. So they could get, or um, they could get, I think that was the same theme in the movie of Civil Action with John Travolta based on a novel. They could get a, a discovery order from the court to go on to the, um, the chemical plant and take a tour and see what they're doing and get the blueprints and get their mode of operation and their code of ethics and all this other stuff and all their internal documents. Okay? That's discovery. I'm discovering the other side. In family court, you could discover, like anytime you go to jail, 
in a criminal case, the prosecutor automatically hands over discovery, okay? Unless you're a corrupt prosecutor, like some politicians who ran for office who would hide discovery from the other side. It's a, a defense attorney will almost always ask for discovery, so they've gotten it so routine where they just hand over discovery without them asking. And somebody in jail who doesn't get discovery, some other person in jail, you know, people are allowed, it's, you're allowed to give legal advice to other inmates in jail. That's one of the exceptions to practicing law without a license. So an inmate will say, hey, ask for discovery. And they ask for discovery, you got to get it from the other side. So in family court, you could do discovery and request all the other person's banks. Say. Like if you're a woman who's trying to get a bunch of money from a guy and you were just a housewife and you're ignorant of the finances, the husband did all the finances, he was controlling and he beat you down, all this other stuff. And now you deserve some alimony because he put you out on the street. You didn't have a place to go. You sacrificed for 20 years. You got to get re-educated to get back on your feet to live and survive and maintain the lifestyle you have. So you want to find out all the finances that he had and where all the money went in the marriage and all that other stuff. So you can do discovery and make him hand over all his investments, all of his bank accounts, all of his transfers, wires, all this. You can discover all that stuff. But you can also do discovery by asking what is going to be the testimony or you can... You can ask questions like, who are you going to have testify at trial when it comes down to doing a trial? You could preemptively find out what's going on way ahead of time. Then you could just ask any question that you might ask at trial. What's your, what's your proposed parenting plan? Why do you think, like, if I'm representing a father and I'm an attorney, I might send over a questionnaire that says... What do you think, what's the problems with the father that you have? Do you think kids need both parents in their lives? Do you think both parents are equally important? Do you think that, um, do you think both parents should be equally involved in the kid's life? If the mother says yes, yes, and no, then you get it, then you can do follow-up questions like, why would you say no to something that's equally important? You can ask a bunch of questions like that and the method of asking them, there's a couple different methods. So discovery, think of discovery as an umbrella, okay? That's a whole process and a way to discover anything on the other side. Whether you're defending yourself, if, 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 you're, an, if you're like, if there's a car accident and it's State Farm versus Geico, like two people got in a car wreck at an intersection and they, they each think it was the other person's fault. So they go to court to prove their case. They might try and do discovery and interview each each driver. Was the light red, yellow, or green? Who was on your left? Who was on your right? Was it raining, dry, whatever? And if their story doesn't match the facts or after you do the interview, you go check the crime scene and, and check the pictures and stuff and nothing jibes, then you can sit back and say, go ahead and sue us, you idiot. Your story doesn't make any sense. By the time we go to trial, when we, or when we go to trial, I'm gonna make you look stupid on the stand, so your lawsuit against us is gonna make you look stupid and we're gonna get attorney fees for a frivolous lawsuit because you're at fault and you're suing us, you idiot, it's your fault. Or if you do discovery and they're like, man, this guy's got a great case, it's really our client that was in the wrong, let's just settle out of court and then you pay them and say, hey, how about we give you $50,000? He's like, no, I'm seeking $100,000. You say, how about 70? And you get to 80 and they're like, okay, we'll settle on that. The discovery process happens outside of court so that people have a chance to resolve the issues after they learn of all these things and discover all the evidence that's gonna be used. <clears throat> One of the purposes of discovery is to be able to figure out whether somebody has a good or bad case and the more you do discovery, the more one side's gonna realize, hey, we got a bad case or we're gonna get royally screwed, we better settle. Or if the prosecutor in your criminal case, the evidence that you're discovering is weak and the video surveillance is really blurry and you can't even tell if it's you or not, even if you did it, you say, okay, I'm gonna go to trial. Their evidence sucks. Now the way to do discovery is one, you could send written questionnaires that says, what do you think about this? Was it light, light red, yellow, or green? 
Those are called interrogatories. You're interrogating the other side with questions. Let me do a family law one to make it even easier to understand. An interrogatory might be something you don't know the answer to. Like, first of all, you start off, what's your name? What's your address? What's your phone number? All this stuff. Get personal details because you're going to want to use that in case you want to use emails against somebody or their social media. Get them to admit that what their social media is. So you might say in an interrogatory, name all the people that babysit the child when you're at work or when you need a babysitter. Another one questionnaire is called requests for production and that means to produce stuff name uh, or produce all the documents all the contracts with all those daycares or produce all the receipts of payments to daycares or produce any agreements you have with the daycare all the documents and flyers so that's you have a question of who are all the daycares or who's the personal individual babysitters and then you say produce documents or things produce a diary produce you know pictures that you have that you're going to use against me in court produce all the video that you're going to use in court at when you go to trial then there's requests for admissions where the only answer is admit or deny so that one you might you probably know the answer to so you would say admit that billy smith is a babysitter that you use admit or deny that billy smith is a registered sex offender admit or deny that you knew he was a sex offender before you hired him if that's true they're screwed no matter how the answer if they say admit or like i deny knowing that he was a sex offender that means that they didn't vet their babysitters or research the their babysitters so they're a bad parent for that if they knew they're a sex offender that's even worse so if you know a fact and you don't want to go to trial and have to ask them and they squirm their way out of it get them to answer it through discovery way before trial your attorney's a total dumbass if they don't get answers before trial i saw and so so there's written questionnaires rogs rfps and rfas interrogatories Request for admission, request for production. I'll write them, I'll, I'll type them out below this video, wherever I post this video. So those are the three written questionnaires. Remember we have the uh, uh, discovery is an umbrella. Interrogatories, request for admission, request for production. But then the number one tool is the deposition. I have a whole video on that where your attorney will subpoena the mother, the father, a babysitter, a witness that's going to be used against you, a forensic expert, a guardian ad litem. Everybody's such a punk ass bitch little coward to confront a guardian ad litem. They're just a, they're just another person in the case. If you have a forensic blood expert on your side of the case, like in the O.J. Simpson case, he had his own forensic blood expert. The state had theirs. His forensic blood expert was this Asian dude who said, "I don't know what's going on here, but something's wrong." OJ's blood was missing from the lab and then they found blood at the scene of the crime. Obviously, the cops stole it from the lab and planted it at the scene. There was a lot of corruption going on with that. And that, that's one thing that, that no matter who you believe, whether he did it or not, there was a lot of corruption exposed at that, at that trial too, like that. But if you do a deposition and you ask the expert witness, you, a deposition is, I'm an attorney. I subpoena the mother to, the, to my office and say, you come to my office and you sit there until I'm done with you. And then a court reporter puts her under oath and then types away and records everything she says. And I grill the crap out of her. Why don't you want the father to have a relationship with the kids? I do, I do. Well, why'd you withhold the children from him for four weeks? Do you think children need both parents? Do you think they're both equally important? Why, did you, have you seen the statistics on absent fathers and how that destroys kids? Why would you want to do that to your kids? I saw one stupid, dumbass, moronic, airheaded, dumbed down, brainless zombie of a sheep attorney who should be disbarred. But 99% of you are such lazy bums. You won't file a bar complaint. You won't sue for malpractice. You won't write a demand letter. And so these attorneys keep going. But this attorney said, oh, I want to wait until trial and surprise her with questions. No, you dumbass. She's going to surprise you with her answers. Why would you not want to get the answers before the test. If you have a final exam and there's a, there's, there's a, the teacher is gonna have a little discussion group and they're gonna talk about all the content of the test, you'd be an idiot not to go to that and get the answers. Your attorney can get caught with his pants down with them answering something he didn't expect. So that's the short of discovery.